Hey, great to have you. Welcome to the program. Thanks. Great radio stations across the land. Newsmax TV, iHeartRadio, JoePags.com. Really appreciate you stopping by on a Wednesday. That is a hump day. Start the week in the bottom of the hill to Monday morning. We get through Monday, get through Tuesday, get through Wednesday. After Wednesday, straight downhill to the weekend from here. Let's check in with Fergie. My hump, my hump. Day. My hump, my hump, my hump. Day. My hump, my hump, my hump. My hump, my hump, my hump. Check it out. We're checking it out. It, it actually sounded like her there, didn't it? No, not at all. You would freak out not if I got Fergie all. to sing the day part. <laughs> I would, because she would never do that it. That would be amazing. Never. Now, back in the day, there was a guy who listened in, in Houston on our great radio station there, um, KPRC uh, 950. Uh, it, it, I've been on there for a long time, but he used to call in all the time, or he would send me emails, and he knew Fergie's father or something. and was Oh, gonna... I remember that. Yeah. I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure... Um, he sent me a picture of Fergie that was signed to me or something. But I don't know what the hell that would be at this point. Oh, it was a long wow. time ago. Dude, but you um, I was like, look, look, have it look, keep the damn picture. Just sing the day part. Yeah, she won't. Can you imagine? That. No, <laughs> that would be hilarious. No, it wouldn't. All happen. right. So when we came back, people may have seen a perplexed look in my face. Carrie, you might have seen this, and um, uh-huh. I was a little bit perplexed because of that story I just I just saw. <sighs> Wow, yeah. Yeah, a fr- fr- friend of mine sent mm-hmm. me the story. And now, I Mm-mm. full disclosure, I don't know who this person is. Now, uh, Polo and Karina more into pop culture than we are. Um, right. Leah Tice? Tice? I don't know. Tice? I, who, who is Tice, that? I guess. I have no idea. Polo, do you I've know who this person is? Leah before. Tice? Ticey? I've never heard of that person. T Y S S E. Leah is her first name, and then T Y S S E. Karina, have you ever heard of Leah Tice or Ticey? Tice? No, I haven't heard of her. I'll look her up. Maybe she's been on a show or something. I know, but maybe. Well, she's a singer. Maybe this is the reason why she did it because she knew that people like me'd be talking about it. Mm-hmm. Maybe this now gets maybe her some publicity. So. Yeah, um, let me see uh, over on on the Twitters. Uh, it is called the Twitters, right? Uh, no, no, it'd be Twitter. I'm trying to see. Um, I don't she know. Well, I'm trying to see how many followers she has, if she's anybody. Oh, 2,500 followers. Mm. She's from Berkeley. Mm-hmm. And somehow her account is verified at 2,500. So she's <laughs> she's a wannabe. Okay, yeah. so, so she's not really, uh, she hasn't succeeded much yet. She's tweeted a thousand times, and she probably only has 2,500 followers because of the, the crap she pulled last night. Mm-hmm, maybe so. If you can, maybe. give the people the story that I'm talking I will. about here. From ABC 10, league rules state NBA players, coaches, and trainers must stand and line up in a dignified posture along the sidelines or the foul line during the national anthem. The rules don't say anything about the national anthem singer. On Monday night, Leah Tice took a knee as she performed the last lines of the anthem at the Sacramento Kings preseason opener at the Golden One Center. And the Berkeley residents moved to not go unnoticed online, and then it follows a lot of tweets and Facebook posts about what she did. Some people are happy, some people <sighs> not too happy she did that. I watched the video. So Talk she's singing me. the end of the song, yeah. right? And then she goes down to one knee, and that's how she finishes the national anthem. Do people applaud? I don't know. I couldn't hear it. I don't have sound when I'm in here, so I don't know. This in Sacramento, California. Sacramento mm-hmm. Kings. Uh, that's where they play. Um I have the honor, and I have had, and I never know when it's going to happen or if it's going to happen, but when it happens, I feel very honored. I played the national anthem around uh, San Antonio and Houston and all over the place for a long time. I played at, at Houston Astros games. I'm a saxophone player, for those who don't know. I played at, at many, many Spurs games. I played at the baseball weekend when the Rangers played the Dodgers. Um, I, I really love the song. I love playing the song, and I can't even imagine. I can't imagine ever sullying the nation, the flag, Mm -hmm. and the song, and our freedoms and our liberties by getting on one knee after I was an invited guest. You know what I mean? I mean, I I, I am an invited guest to to this arena where 19 to 20,000 people are staring at me, waiting for me to play a song so that the game can start. Mm -hmm. And when I play the song, and I play a lot of songs, but when I play that song, uh, it gives me chills It makes me feel good, makes me feel patriotic and nationalistic, and I can't wait for us to start the game. In fact, at the end of when I play the national anthem, 
Um, I normally will put my fist in the air, you know, just sort of like, you know, go America. Yeah. Um, I guess a fist in the air means something different right now. So this woman somehow, although not very known, at least not on the Twitters, um, Karina, have you looked her up? Is she somebody that I need to know who that is? No, I think she's just famous in San Francisco, that area. Yeah, that tells us a lot. That mm-hmm. it's San Francisco. That tells us a lot because a very, very <laughs> radically left-wing town. Um, I can't imagine being invited and then, because it's an exciting thing. Don't misunderstand me. That's exciting when you get to play the anthem or sing the anthem. Uh, and by the way, they should ask me to sing it. No. Whoa, say, can you? No, you don't think I should sing it next time? No, that's why you stick to the saxophone. Can you imagine yeah. if they invited me to go play it at the Spurs game and I just started singing? Do you think they'd be mad at me? I can. <laughs> just a little bit. Stand I think there with the know. saxophone, but sing they'd it. They'd be mad at you a lot. Yes, don't don't, don't try that. You and the rocket's rocket. What? What? Ooh. I can say what. I can say what right in the middle yeah. of it. They would kick you out. Mm-mm. No. In my that I'm gonna have to put that in my bucket list or on my bucket list. Singing, Singing the, the national, national anthem? anthem at one of these things. Now again, I go there, I play, I prove it myself, so I'm asked back, um, and, and and I enjoy the hell out of it. But uh, you know, it's not. I'm not doing anything for the audience. I'm not doing anything for the Spurs. I'm not doing anything for the NBA. I'm not doing anything for Major League Baseball. I'm not. I'm doing something. They're doing it for me. They're giving me the honor of being able to do it. And she thought that she somehow was in the right. She still thinks she's in the right. She actually explains oh, why sure. she did it in oh, Billboard. Really? Oh, yeah, in Billboard magazine. Oh, all right. That'll be good. Quote, this act embodies the conflict many of us feel. Tice, who's never been heard of, explained of her actions in a Facebook post following the performance. Quote, I love and honor my country as deeply as anyone, yet it is my responsibility as an American to speak up against injustice as it affects my fellow Americans. I have sung the anthem before, but this time taking a knee felt like the most patriotic thing what? I could do. Hold on a second. Uh, I do. I, no. There's one thing that no. she hasn't done that I think she should. What's that? I'm going to need her to take a drug test. <laughs> I'm going to need her. I think she should. Drug That's tested. A patriotic thing she could have done Come on, while she dude. was singing the National Anthem? Come on, man. No. No, no, ma'am. Now, um, the Kings, the NBA, she, this woman should never, ever be invited to do that again. Mm-hmm. It's an honor. It's a privilege. It's something that not everybody gets to do. And you, you should never take it lightly. It's a re, you have a responsibility. She's right about the responsibility. The responsibility is to represent that flag, our freedoms, our liberties, our constitution, our great land, our exceptionalism, and that you're about to see a damn good basketball game. That's why you're there. And there are rules when, when it comes to playing or singing the national anthem. There are rules when you perform the national anthem. Like uh, the Spurs have, and, and I have no problem telling you this, they've asked that I make sure that I'm not wearing the colors of the other team. I mean, if that makes oh, sense. Well, there you go. Like okay, they're playing the yeah. Lakers, I show up in, you know, in, in gold and, and purple. No, that would not make that. sense. So I generally speaking, depending on if I'm having a fat day or not, um, either I'll show up in a suit if I'm having a fat day, if I'm having a, an in-shape day, I'll roll the sleeves up a little bit and show off the guns a little bit. You know, I'll do that. Oh, brother, um, yeah. I, I think for TV, we, sh- we probably should get them some of that video. Maybe we'll play in the next day or, st- or so. But, um, no, again, it, when you have that honor, when somebody does you that kind of favor, the last thing you do is, is take a dump on, on what they've done. And by dump, I mean like a dump truck. Uh, 1-800-383-9624. Can you think of uh, – this is for my listeners and my viewers – can you think of any good reason why this is okay in any way, shape, or form? I can't. 1-800-383-9624, JoePags.com. Stay right here.